Hello, my fellow welders, welding engineers, welding inspectors, whatever your role might be in the welding industry. Today I have a very exciting video for you. We're going to be talking about welding procedures. Often with welding procedures, people think of amps, volts, and travel speed, but there's one other aspect that has to be looked at, and it can be fatal if it's missed. So stick around. Recently, my travels took me far outside of my home base in West Texas. Now, I can't go into great detail as to where exactly I was at as it's still under investigation and nothing's been disclosed to the public yet. However, it led to today's video on welding procedures and why it's critical to follow them exactly. There's typically three things that I ask for when going to a weld that's had a major failure. First is to see the film. In this case, the weld had been x-rayed and the film was very clean. There was no indications that showed that the weld had any defects in it whatsoever. The second thing that I ask for is the welding procedure. In this case, the welding procedure was very sound. They had made tens of thousands of welds with this procedure and everything looked good. The third thing I ask to see is the weld itself. And in this case, in seeing the weld itself, nothing jumped out as being obvious. At first glance, when we look at this weld, it looks normal. The weld itself meets the visual acceptance criteria, but as we look a little bit closer, we realize that the material grade of the flange is different from the material grade of the pipe material itself. This leads us to our next question. Is our welding procedure designed to weld 4130, or is the welding procedure only designed to weld the grade B material of the pipe itself? After further investigation, we realized that the welding procedure in this case was only designed to weld ASME A106 grade B material. Therefore, the flange being 4130 has an extremely high hardenability that was never intended to be welded with this welding procedure. It's very rare to have a weld break 360 degrees all the way around. I've seen thousands of cracks, but very rarely have I seen one break like this. At only 200 pounds of pressure, this weld broke apart completely. With devastating consequences because material had been substituted that the welding procedure did not cover. And this is a common problem that happens all the time. As with all my videos, I hope that when you go out into the field tomorrow, you're a little bit more prepared that you are able to learn from the mistakes of somebody else. If you like this video and you want to see my future videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much.